Hello, my name is Sam Johnson and I'm a voice teacher. Today I will be reacting to and analyzing Samfa performing plastic 100 degrees Celsius live. Great chord progression so far. I know I usually don't talk about that kind of stuff because it's definitely not my specialty, but I love hearing, um, I don't know what kind of music this guy makes. I honestly have no idea. I've never heard of Samfa until I press play on this. False. But I really like the chord progression that they're doing so far, and if it's any sort of contemporary music using that kind of interesting jazz leading, it makes, it makes me interested. Interesting sound from the piano having that part of the wood removed. It just sounds different than if you had the wood on. There are so many things you can do to pianos to make them sound slightly differently. And there were actually some artists, artists, composers, whatever, who would do modified piano and they would compose for modified piano and they would tell you to do things like put a a pen cap between these two strings and put felt over this part and all of this and they were able to turn this instrument that has a fairly consistent sound all the way across into just like a madhouse and I think it's really interesting having people modify acoustic instruments in order to create totally different sounds because most of the time we want as many notes as we can that sound the exact same. Just taking off the wood right there they still have a very similar timbre. The same thing is true with the voice. We want to have as many different notes available that sound similar because that just gives us a lot of flexibility. And then if we want it to not sound similar, if we want to flip, for instance, or if we want to overdrive it, or if we want to yell for a moment, then you can do that as long as like everything else is about the same because you know where to come back to, to that home base. So it's kind of a tangent, but anyway, that's, I, I like the sounds I'm hearing so far. Oh, right, I know him. Okay, I like him. I'm I'm sorry, I, I know him from that Drake song that I like a lot because, surprise, I like Drake even though I think he is an extremely pa problematic person. And I'm not even convinced that he exists. Um, he probably does and he's probably really problematic. But the song that Sam was on is really cool. So he's got a great recognizable voice. Haven't had to see his face, just heard him sing that first note and it's like, oh wow, that's a very unique sound. upon my face It's so hot I've been melting out here so far he's spending most of his time up around that F4. Um, so when I say four or five or three, that's talking about the octave that we're on. So if you've ever played a piano, middle C is C4. If we go down the C below that, that's C3. If we go down the C below that, that's C2. C1 is all the way down there. And C5 is the male high C. And C6 is the soprano high C. Um, so or the tenor high C is the C5 and the soprano is the C6. It's, I'm trying really hard to get into the habit of talking about voices not in a gendered way because I believe that there is some information that we can glean by someone's birth sex uh, just because it gives us more information about how the instrument probably developed during puberty. But I just think that it's also a little bit more inclusive to talk about soprano voices because there can be men who are sopranos. It's the same thing talking about women who might be tenors and uh, or basses. Like we had a, a woman in my choir in college who was a bass and like she just liked singing bass still. And it worked really well. So that's something that I'm trying to get across, to change in how I talk about voices because I'm always trying to do a little bit better. Anyway, 
he's spending most of his time around that F. When he goes a little bit lower, we hear a little bit of extra breathiness, and I think it's just a nice color. But we, even when we're going to that F, you get a little bit of like weird breathiness and compression. It would be interesting to see what is actually happening in his voice if we got a scope in there. I'm made out of plastic out here. You touch down in the base of my fears. Houston, can, can, can you hear? And we both had to harness our pain. Close in, hope at the case. Oh, in hell and I'm up. That time you got up to the F sharp, it still had the same sort of tone and the same volume. It's really interesting to hear voices that are able to get that kind of coloring, that kind of breathiness, and just. It, it doesn't sound the most efficient to my ears. It's not the voice, it's not the thing that I try to get. However, it is obviously efficient with him. And that's what makes me wonder like, is there something physically not normal in there? Normal being just, you know, most people look like this when you look in their throat. Uh, is there not an injury, but just, some sort of uniqueness to him that creates this sound, or is it a vowel thing, or does he lose his voice when he sings like this? I, I don't think so. Like, it does sound easy, and it doesn't look like he's forcing any of these sounds. It's just not the kind of voice that I'm used to hearing, which I think is awesome. Maybe, I think that's why I like his voice so much, is it's got this little bit of confusion to me. He also, when he would go up to those notes, the F and the F sharp, he's not, always blasting the volume up through that area. And that's right on a tenor's uh, tenor. I, I think he's probably some sort of tenor or some sort of baritone uh, right on their bridge. And so a lot of times baritones and tenors want to like press into that area or clamp down or grab or increase the volume like crazy. And sometimes you can get away with it, but in order to balance the whole voice, we generally don't want to treat it that much different from anything right below it or right above the bridge. No way. I love those mornings. I also love his vibrato because I, I would consider it a vibrato. Is it totally even in the way that a classical singer's vibrato might be at a high level? No, but I think it's just this really nice extra coloring at the end of his phrase where if he just had a complete straight tone, it might start not sounding as good. It's just cool. He's got so much cool stuff in his voice. When the sun's up. And I know I'm pausing it every two seconds, but that's what happens when you're looking at good singers because they do so many good things and I want to point them out. And I would suggest, just as another aside, if you're doing this kind of exercise with your own voice, if you're watching videos of yourself or listening to recordings of yourself, which I highly suggest, I think it's super productive for learning how to be a better singer, to record yourself and watch it back, I really suggest focusing as much on the good things as you can. It's almost everyone's first instinct to just start being like, well, I heard that on set was terrible and I didn't like my voice of this and that's a little pitchy dog. And you just go through and demolish yourself. And it's really bad for your mental health. And it's also not that good for getting better at things. So I like the sandwich approach where you say one really good thing and then you say something that is a constructive criticism. I didn't like this onset. I think that we could do that a little bit better. And then another really good thing. And that also forces you to get equally critical about the good that you're doing because the more that you focus on the good things that you're doing in your voice, they will start overtaking the things that you're doing poorly. It's kind of like positive dog training. Smoking in the lobby, yeah. I mean, he is moving his mouth fairly abruptly when he gets to those high notes, but it's working for him. So as long as you can get away with it, there's no like real problem with that. And some of the reason that we don't want to have like really abrupt movements, especially around the passaggio, is because it doesn't prepare us very well to go to notes higher, to notes above the passaggio. And a lot of times when I'm trying to balance voices, I'm thinking not just about the one song that they're doing, but about how would that habit impact them trying more difficult or higher uh, repertoire? And, you know, doing a little thing like that, I think it works really well on this song. 
I think that I'd need to have a lot more information to see if it's making it a harder time to go toward higher notes. But if I had a student who was doing this and it was working well on this, but then they got to another higher song that it just like completely locked up, that would be a piece of important information to me where it's like, maybe let's go back to this other song that you were doing this, see if we can balance those vowels to make sure that they would continue helping you on your way up higher. And then maybe the song that goes a little bit higher would be a little more successful. Waiting for my name to pop, pop, yeah. He's got such cool agility in his voice too. Usually I'd run home. And took the issue under. I love that train sound. Oh, that is so cool. I really like how they just got the sounds of the world and it sounds like it's part of the song. It's, oh man, that's really cool. Uh, yeah. Living with my. That time he does a little bit of a flip. Living with my. And then when he comes back down, he comes back to the more full voice. <laughs> With. That's a B flat. So when he flipped up to the B flat, it kind of backed off on the volume. It just, what happens physically is that the vocal folds, instead of coming together a little bit more, it just goes to the sides of them. The vocal ligament, or some people call it falsetto. I, there are so many words in vocal training and a lot of them mean very similar things and a lot of them people will use the same word to mean a lot of different things and so it can get really confusing and that's why in these videos I try really hard to use a lot of these different terms so that you might be like oh wow I heard this one person use this term I heard Sam use this term and this term and this term and then try to find a commonality between them because it's really hard to talk to other people about this and to talk to other singers about it it's also difficult because so much of the time you're just describing sensation and while across populations a lot of people will experience similar sensations there are times that it's just a totally different experience and so I could say this feels like this to me and someone else who could be a brilliant singer it might not make any sense to them or it might make a lot of sense and so the more that we're able to expand our vocabulary we can start finding common ground between different singers the reason that we use the anatomical terms and talk about the physiology and about the physics is so you can talk to scientists because scientists don't sing most of the time there are a few really good scientists who are also quite good singers, but there are very, very few that are high level of both. And so you need to get on the level of the scientists to be able to understand what they're talking about and then translate that into stuff that's usable in the studio or in your own voice. I didn't really know what that lump was. Yeah. That time he went up to the A flat with the no, and he kind of narrowed it. It didn't go, I didn't really know, I didn't really know. He didn't spread into it and kind of pull chest with that. Um, notice when I did that, my volume went up, my vowel went really wide. With him, the vowel remained kind of closed, oh. Um, we couldn't see it super well because of the cool camera work that they're doing, but you could hear it didn't go wide because the vowel didn't distort. And then also the volume didn't really speak quite as much. And they could just have some compression on his voice that's making it not sound like it's peaking as much, but I think that it was a conscious choice that he did. Just him being a skilled singer. It's so hot, I've been melting out here. I'm made out of plastic out here. I also love how much he's moving his body as he's doing this. He's keeping an overall beat internally. It's getting out to his arms and helping him keep time with this, but it's it just also makes everything feel groovy and like he's just, he feels the music. And ultimately like, is he thinking about any of the stuff I'm talking about? I hope not. Honestly, I hope not. If he is, he's going to be way too in his head. And I don't think he is because he's too good of a performer. He's thinking about communication and he's thinking about what he's feeling and he's vulnerable enough to share that with people. You touch down in the base of my fears. Houston, can, can, can you hear? And we both had to harness our pain. I like that little triplet that both have to harness a pain. Da, 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 da. Sit and hop at the case. I'll win hell and I'm up and away. Up 
This is such a cool video. <laughs> like, all vocal things aside, this is just such a well shot video, well recorded. It's amazing how well you, how clearly you can hear his voice outside. And I think it's that microphone. That microphone has, it's interesting with the gain on it. So the gain is how much it picks up. I, don't know if they have it plugged into a cloud lifter, but a lot of times that microphone just doesn't pick up a lot of outside sounds and it's really good at being directional like that from what I've heard. So it could be that is helping create the really good sound around here because you're not sound treating this outdoor area. That's just not a thing. But you're also not going to get a lot of weird echo and reverb from it because all the sound is just going to get lost over the wall there. This is well thought out. The tech people did an excellent job and I think that he's performing super well next to it. It's like out to space and his inner is And like a blossom you opened up See, he's moving. You can feel what the next thing is. And if you dance along with it, you can feel when he's gonna come in. And that's staying true. He's not like sacrificing the integrity of the rhythm to try to put in a really rubato line to create the sound, or not rubato, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know the right word for it, but to slow everything down and kind of bring it out of tempo because it, it just doesn't work as well most of the time, especially in pop music and in, it, it just doesn't work as well in my opinion. And so I think it's a really good skill to just start hearing what that next beat is going to be even when he's not playing it. Because if you can hear that, then you're going to be able to start getting better at hearing it in other tracks. And then if you're singing a karaoke track, they'll likely have that same kind of beat happening in the back. And if you can hear it yourself, you'll be able to just stay on with with karaoke tracks, with other instruments that are playing with you, with other singers, all of that. So really practice that. And I love artists that are that bring it into a physical part of their body because I do think it's helpful. Understood why you could not love. Oh, it's so hot, I've been melting out here. On that so, he kind of um, kept it a little compressed and it sounded a little overdrived at the top. If he wanted to make it sound less overdrive, he could probably just drop his jaw slightly. Made out of plastic out here. You touch down in the base of my feet. That time on touch, he did change it from touch to touch. And it just gives him that quality in his voice, having that slight vowel modification. If he was going higher with that note, it would probably stop working fairly soon. But he's not going higher, so that vowel modification is fine. If he was going higher, we'd probably want to get closer to a touch or a touch versus a touch. Houston, can, can, can you hear? And we both had to harness our pain Close it and hope it decays Oh, we had a numb up and away Up and away He closed to the E, which is the second vowel in way. A lot of times it's better for singers to close or to just find an A, kind of like the vowel in chaos, and just hold that out. Uh, up and away. But it changes the sound. It, it changes the style. So he gets some of the style from this by closing to it. Up and away. And then kind of fading out in the way that he does. I obviously loved that. His voice is killer. It's just got such a cool quality to it. And that's a really important, valuable thing in pop music because if they can recognize your voice from the second that it is on, on the radio, they're gonna pay attention a little bit better. And so that brand recognizability is so valuable, so valuable, and he absolutely has that. I'm gonna listen to more of him. 
I like him a lot and I'm not sure why I haven't listened to more of him before because the stuff I've been exposed to, I really, really love. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment below about what you learned in this video or something else you'd like me to talk about in future videos or if you have any questions and go check out my description. I've got a bunch of good links and I would love for you to click most of those links. Um, and yeah, if you're interested in voice lessons with me, you can go check out my website, vocalese.net, and maybe you'll be able to find a time, but honestly, they're a little hard to get sometimes. So if it's not there, please don't email me saying that it's not there because I know it's not there and just read the front of it where it says, if it's not there, I'm fully booked. And I would love to work with you, but unfortunately that's just not the world right now. And if you want to still take lessons, you can also book, book with Mark Reynolds. And this is a very long outro. Thank you.